welcome or welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm bringing you the third episode of the Worth the Hype series. In today's episode, we're doing Massimo Duty, which I am beyond excited to review. I did get a few comments about it. To be honest, I was gonna do it anyways because I've always wanted to try some pieces from there. All I can say is that I am beyond impressed with most of the things, so I'm very excited for this video. I've even featured a lot of this over on my Instagram and my TikTok, which I'll leave on the screen now and in the description box of this video. If you're new here and you haven't actually watched the other Worth the Hype episodes on my channel. I've actually done two other episodes before this where I reviewed Arquette and Cos and basically in this series what I'm doing is reviewing brands that you may want to try so you can comment down below brands that you want me to review but these are brands that are slightly higher than your typical H&M and Zara price point so it might be something that you're putting more thought into when you're shopping online and so in this series hopefully I can help you really get a rough idea of what the brand is like, the quality of the pieces, the experience of shopping there so that you can make a better decision when you're shopping at these places. I select one piece from each category or at least I try to sometimes there aren't pieces that I love from every category but for example I'll pick Pick one thing from the t-shirts section, one thing from the shirts, one thing from the trousers, etc, etc. So that when you're shopping online, you kind of have a rough idea of like, okay, what are the jeans from COS actually like? But with that being said, I actually just want to get straight into this video because I'm not kidding you when I say I'm very excited about these pieces. Just before I get started, I also just want to mention the experience I had at Massimo Duty, especially in store because I ordered online and I went into store twice. And all I can say is that the in-store experience is definitely premium. It's definitely up there with other brands that I've visited their stores that are more luxurious. If you're walking around the store and you've like picked something off the rail and ready to go and try it on, just so that you're not like carrying everything. They'll actually come up to you and ask you if you're gonna try it on. And if you say yes, they'll offer to take it to the changing room so that you don't have to walk around the store holding anything. And then once you've tried on the pieces in the changing room, if you've decided that you wanna keep something, they will actually take it to the till for you. So you basically don't even have to carry any of the pieces in Massimo Duty in the store. So I genuinely loved that experience. And if you've ever walked into Massimo Duty before, at least all the ones I've been to, they always have steamers. And this isn't sponsored, this is genuinely like, I was very impressed with the experience. I love my like high quality pieces. I love taking care of my things. Seeing other people do that as well just shows that they care about their pieces and it's not just like on the floor. You'll not see any clothes on the floor. There's steamers around the whole shop. So literally everything is ready to wear so that when you try it on, that's exactly like how it would look once you've steamed it. So you don't have to go home and steam it. So I was really impressed with that experience. Anyways, onto the actual pieces themselves. Starting off with tops as I usually do. This is the first thing that I picked up and I'll leave all prices and sizes on the screen. This is a wool and cashmere cape sweater in this sort of like beige-ish color. And I absolutely love this. I think this one was around the 89, 90 pound range which I thought for wool and cashmere, comparing the prices that I've paid for cashmere and wool before, it's definitely a reasonable price for wool and cashmere. Usually there isn't anything under the 100 pound mark for those materials. This one I actually got in a size Europe extra small. This is actually like a, I'm not sure what to call this, like a roll neck. I think it's a roll neck. It's definitely not a turtleneck. I'm actually wearing a turtleneck now. This one's from COS. I love this one because it only has a certain amount of material so you can only really do one thing with it which is you just fold it once and that's it and so it's super easy to wear it the only thing i would say about this i absolutely loved it i loved the color and i'll put on a try on clip on the screen but the roll neck is a little bit too complicated to make getting dressed easier i think if they had just you know if you just and I don't know, maybe you can get this tailored. You know, it's pretty simple to just get some of this fabric cut off so that it's just like a simple turtleneck. Because I will say the shape of this is so unique. It's almost like an A-line. It looks super premium. I do have something similar to this from H&M that I got like two to three years ago. And a lot of people ask me about that. And maybe to be honest, it's because I've had it for a while and I need to have some like maintenance done to it but this one obviously doesn't have any of the bubbles right now. I know it's cashmere and wool, so it probably will form over time and then you have to like make sure to care for it, get it like, you know, you can get debobblers and stuff, but I really just like this. It just looks so nice. With regards to the itchiness of this, from what I can remember when I tried it on and if I am like wrong about anything when I'm editing this, I'll put on the screen updates. But from what I remember, this was a little bit itchy because it is wool, but it's not the most extreme itchiness because it does have cashmere blended in there. I'm just gonna check the composition of this. This is 96% wool and 4% cashmere. I think that's why I found it 
a little bit itchy but not overly itchy i think it's because the majority of it is actually wool it's not like something uncomfortable i actually found it really nice it was one of those things that's like you put it on it feels a little bit different than if you're not wearing wool obviously you know what i'm talking about it's like going from wearing cashmere which for example like this to then wearing this you will notice a difference it's a little bit more itchy but it's not like itchy if that makes sense like not overly itchy to be honest though i haven't worn this all day long so i can't say if it gets really uncomfortable i typically wouldn't wear wool cashmere or anything like that all day long because at some point i genuinely just get too hot but no i absolutely love this i think the color is really nice and i think the thing i like about Massimo duty is you can definitely pick up basics from here which is why i always say like i had some comments on tiktok of people saying that it was like overpriced the pieces that i picked up i genuinely see by their price at that point maybe they're marked up a little bit as with most brands but i genuinely saw the quality in the experience when i actually went shopping there and the actual pieces themselves and the materials that they use so in all honesty i think if you're going to shop at massimo duty maybe pick up basics here that you're wanting to have in your closet and your collection for a longer period of time rather than thinking that you have to buy all of your outfits and every single piece from massimo duty maybe it's just a sweater that you want to last a little bit longer usually i'm not an extra small for sweaters usually i'm a small one thing i will say about massimo duty is their sizing seems to not run big but it doesn't seem like they have like a size four for like trousers like i'm a size four and i think most of their trousers had like size eight and like there was one cardigan which was super popular from massimo duty and that one starts from i think i think it started from a size 10 so i think it was size 10 12 14 if i'm not wrong i see it now how they do basically it's small medium large but to them the small would be a 10 it's a little bit confusing at times so do check the size guide on their website of course this would not be a worth the hype episode without a black t-shirt i always like to pick these up i know it seems a little bit repetitive at times but the reason i do it is so that you can see a really good comparison between all the black t-shirt from all the places this is their sort of like premium i'll leave the name but i think it's like a premium cotton t-shirt or something like that i got this in a size extra small this one is lovely. If you've seen the last episode for the Cosworth, the hype that I did, you'll know that I mentioned that the Cos one was slightly cropped for some reason. And so I sent that one back. I compared it to the Arquette one, which I also have in here just because I always like to compare it. So I'll do that in a second, but I did get this in an extra small, so I can't completely compare it. Usually I'm a size small. If I got this in a small, I would say it's more closer to the Arquette one than the Cos one was. It's not cropped. It's the same material. It's just what I would call a good quality t-shirt. Now that I've experienced the Arquette one, I know what to look for for a good quality t-shirt and this one definitely ticks that criteria box. It's just everything that you would want in a t-shirt. Just that nice premium feeling. I wouldn't say, let me get out my Arquette one which I put in here. The difference, I will put close-ups, but the collar on this has this like ribbing detail whereas the Arquette one is plain. And then other than that, I would say these are very similar to one another they are both they have some weight to it they feel very premium they feel very well made if i'm not wrong so yeah this one from massimo duty is 100 percent cotton so it's just a really good basic really nice one so the one from massimo duty is about 39 40 pounds and the one from arquette is 35 so i would say if you're genuinely like trying to find something that good incredible quality black t-shirt that looks more premium than any other you know black t-shirt that you're gonna find i would say maybe just go for the arquette one the arquette one is 35 pounds so i don't think it's completely necessary to go to the massimo duty one unless you find that you just prefer massimo duty i don't know the experience maybe you're already inside a massimo duty and you're looking for it and you know if you're already there and it's convenient i guess then maybe just go for this one the only time i would go for this one is if this one wasn't in stock so i would just say these are really similar to one another i think the other difference i will say is the cut of the shoulder so i'll put a try on of the simo duty one versus the arquette one but you can see the sleeves i think this one is more of a blend between the feminine and the masculine blend because it has this like the way that it's stitched on you will see what i'm talking about the drop starts a little bit i don't know it kind of gives your shoulders a little bit more something you'll be able to see in the clips what i'm talking about but the arquette one is more of like a i wouldn't call it boxy but it's definitely more like a masculine take i think next up in the tops is a black blazer this is my new favorite blazer i would consider this to be like a tuxedo style blazer it's a little bit different to the usual black blazers that i pick out i actually picked this one up in store 
This one, I believe I got in a size 10. So again, with the sizing, with Missy Majuti, I realized the sizing is not the same as my usual sizing. Usually if I'm shopping, you know, you guys might have seen if you watched the Arcat one and the Cos one, the sizes were pretty much the same. 32 for the trousers, which is like a four, and you know, a small for all the tops. Like it's all the same. Missy Majuti, I would say if you're shopping at Missy Majuti, maybe you're better off shopping in store because the sizes, they're not like, not true to size they're just different sizing if that makes sense so yeah i got this one in a 10 i could have done with an 8 which is my usual size so i think this one is you know pretty true to size but i wanted a more it's not oversized but just a little bit more oomph to it it has this like satin finish to it which i absolutely love and this really reminds me of the Saint Laurent blazers because if you've ever seen Saint Laurent blazers, the way they stitch on their buttons, they always have double breasted and then they have, you know, three buttons and they always have one that's quite high up. It's such a like Saint Laurent vibe. So when I tried this on, I was like, it looks way more premium. To be honest, I was going to say it looks more premium than it actually was, but I think I paid £299 for this one. So it's definitely not like I would say this is definitely more than Arcat more than cause this is definitely higher up price point wise but do you get what you pay for in my opinion yes because i went in store i had the experience it was very nice and then i got this and i genuinely was looking for a tuxedo blazer anyways i don't think they call it a tuxedo blazer on their website and it's funny because on the website you can't tell as much that it's this satin finish it almost just looks like a normal black you know like world cotton blazer let me tell you guys the composition of now this is where it gets a little bit like is it actually worth it because this one is 50 percent viscose 50 percent acetate and you always have to think about material like the other day i just realized that i had something in my collection which is a little bit more premium price point but it has a lot of polyester in it and then you have to think to yourself am i paying a premium price point for basically plastic like you really have to think is it worth it then like you can find polyester anywhere like zara h&m and like obviously many different stores but if you're shopping higher end premium you're paying that premium price point you have to think is it actually worth it because it's polyester and if i can pay you know 20 pounds at zara for polyester why am i paying 600 pounds for polyester here so i think that's where you might question it however as i said before i this is literally my dream blazer like i know i think i mentioned in like my arcat one that i'm trying to find the perfect blazer but this is a different style like for a different occasion i'm still hunting down the perfect black blazer for like day-to-day -day use it also has this sort of like cinching in at the waist which you'll see in the try on clips which just adds that feminine touch to it especially if you size up and have more of like an oversized fit but no i find this incredibly flattering on the waist and i'm actually going to wear this in a couple of days for an event i just love it it's so nice and it just even though it is 299 pounds i would say it even looks more than that like as i said it really has that saint laurent style to it and the collars and the I just love it so much. This is just a perfect festive season blazer. I absolutely love it. And I think it's perfect timing for this video because it's December 1st when I filmed this. The next thing that I got is this wool coat. This one I actually have the tag for because I bought it in store. Everything you buy online comes with a tag, but they cover the price. So this one was £369. And I actually got this in a size large. The size large, I think, is the size 14 on their website. So again, it's like size 10 is a small for some pieces. Size 10 is a small. Size 12 medium and size 14 is a large. If I'm not wrong, it depends how many sizes they have. But if they have three sizes, that's how they basically do it. I got this in a size large, which usually I would never go for. But I did try this on in store. And even the people there were saying, like, it doesn't look over... like. It just looks like a normal oversized wool coat. It doesn't look like, whoa, you didn't get your size. It genuinely looks really nice. The only thing I would say about this coat is right now on camera, it might even look like it's the same color shade as this sofa, like, you know, but actually in person, it's got this like pinky undertone. And the only thing about that is I own a lot of ecru cream toned clothes. And when I tried to style it with this, because I really wanted to do a full cream outfit, and I just couldn't do it because this actually has a pink undertone and most of my things, they're basically ivory cream as opposed to this type of cream. It's so gorgeous. I'm not quite sure what to do with it. Like I really want to keep it, 
The only thing I would say, it does have these double lapels, but what I usually do when I'm wearing this coat, and I'll show you in the close-up try-on, but I actually tuck it in because I usually don't like double lapels. I think double lapels looks a little bit too trendy. I haven't worn this as much as I would have hoped to because it's just so high maintenance. If I'm out and about, and like the other day I went to go get my nails done and I wore this and I was so careful. You know, if you go out anywhere and you sit on chairs, you never know what's on the chair. And so I genuinely couldn't even sit on anything with this. I had to keep taking it off. And I'm like, I don't want to have a coat where I have to constantly think about where I'm sitting and how I'm sitting and always oh, it touching the floor. And I just don't want that. So I did actually get a double face. Double face just means the inside and the outside are both the same material. But I did actually pick up another double-faced wool coat from Cos in black, which is just so much better because it's so low maintenance. It's obviously got some weight to it because it's a wool coat and it has like this really interesting... It's a slit design, but it doesn't actually lead to anything. It's belted, it's got another sort of like, it's not a slit, as I said, it's just this like opening design. Another thing to mention is that on the website, it does actually mention that this is wool, which I obviously have more wool coat, so I can say this is definitely a wool coat. But on the tag, it says that the lining is 55% polyester, 45% viscose. And then on top of that, it just says 18% polyamide. I don't know what that's describing. Now, I actually didn't pick up any like smart trousers from Massimo Duty because I actually went in store, I went online. I just don't think I found anything that I like. So instead, I picked up a pair of jeans. So these are called the Relaxed Fit High Waisted Jeans and it's in this white color and it's got these frayed bottoms. I got this in a size Europe 34, which I believe is a size six. I can tell because I actually tried this on again this morning and the waist, it has a little bit of gaping at the back, which I usually never get, maybe because it's jeans and not trousers. I'm not gonna keep these anyways because first of all, I don't really need another pair of white jeans. I think I have my collection for now pretty well covered, but this is also like these frayed bottoms and I'm not gonna lie, it sounds really like I'm exaggerating, but I actually tripped over these frayings today. Like, I don't know if you can see, there's some that are longer than others you can trip over this and it actually just does keep fraying and i don't understand the point i mean one thing that you could do is just get this tailored get them to tuck in the fraying and get like a very nice clean neat bottom so you get it hemmed but i just don't like the fraying and then i think it was just too vibrant usually i like more of my ecru tones my off-white jeans this is just a little bit too much of a stark whoa and i think maybe in the summer i'll come back to colors like this but right now it just doesn't have a use in my closet however despite that i actually still really like these jeans i think they fit me really well considering the fact that they're in a size six and not in a size four it doesn't feel as heavy duty or heavy weight as the cos or arquette jeans but i think those are two completely different type of jeans this is more if you want like a relaxed fit i would say these are perfect more so in the summertime, as I said, for right now, in the winter time, it's December right now, it's a little bit too bright for my liking. Before I move on to what I have over here, I also just want to mention that for the try-on clip of those jeans, I am around five foot six. I do have quite long legs, but I am around five foot six for anyone who's wondering. Next up, I picked up a pair of shoes. I picked up a pair of boots. I, you might have actually seen this. I posted it on TikTok, if you follow me on there, or if you follow me on Instagram. People went nuts over these boots. They are the leather winted heel boots. These I got for £219, I believe, and they are real calf leather. I did get a question about that on TikTok, but I absolutely love these. There are some pros and cons to this, so I'll get into that. I haven't actually worn these outside yet, but I can still tell you about like comfort levels and everything. I wanted to find something that was a pointed toe. I've been looking for the longest time. The only thing I'd say about pointed heel is sometimes it makes your feet look even longer than they actually are. I remember I got a pair of like sling back pointed heels from Mango and it made my feet look extra extra long so that's the only thing about them but this doesn't too much i wouldn't say i got these in my normal size and they are really nice they're not tight on my feet they're not extra extra roomy but they just they're good i think stick to your normal size if you're gonna pick these up now these i'm gonna take out what comes inside they hold their shape well right now as you can see they hold their shape pretty well they're not like flimsy or anything they're sturdy However, I don't know if you can see on camera where it's got this like, obviously this is leather, so it's gonna crease and that's just normal. 
But the thing about these is that they kind of protrude outwards a little bit. When I say protrude outwards, this is quite wide. I have quite thin legs and calves, so my legs take up like that much. And so this much is just like extra leather in front of my calf. And the only thing about that is because it doesn't, you know, take up this entire space, this part here, when I walk, and you'll see it in the try-on, it kind of does this. This is actually what happens when you're walking. The only thing is I know that it's going to crease in that way and I really don't like when boots crease like that. I did see a pair of heels from Valentino and they look so incredible. But this part here is, it looks like it's a little bit more slick. I love these because they're also very comfortable. They do have a little heel, but honestly, I would compare this to the heel height of a mule. They are very, very comfortable. Considering the fact I never basically wear heels, this is very comfortable. A lot of people are asking me, is it uncomfortable? Is it too high? This is genuinely the heel height of a mule. It's very comfortable. One other thing I'll mention is these, and this is why I'm not putting it really close to the sofa. You can tell because it's left these marks on the tissue paper. I don't know if you guys can see it on this tissue paper. It's got the bluey black like scuffing or like marks. And that's actually from what they use to dye these boots. I don't know exactly how they dye it because I can actually see, and this is why I'm really not sure about whether I want to keep these because the front, and it's such a like small detail, but you know, I'm gonna look at that. But it's like, it almost has this bluey black. I don't know if that's where the dye has come. I'm not sure. Like obviously right now I'm holding it and it's not dyeing my hands, but I did notice the other day when I put tried them on for the first time, there was just like bits of dye on my hand, like fingers, not like I touched it and oh my goodness, my hands, but just little moments when that happened. And so I'm just not sure how this is even gonna work in the rain. Is this gonna gradually turn like a bluish black? I don't want that. So I'm really not sure about these. And I'm like, is it worth just sending this back? And then just perhaps, you know, going and getting the Valentino or maybe looking for something that's a little bit more similar in terms of this width to the Valentino boots. But yeah, and it does also come with a dust bag in its like shoe box, which is really nice. The last thing that I picked up is a bag. This is super similar to the Hermes Picotin bag. After I got this bag, they released a bag which really resembles the Celine box bag. So they're definitely launching a lot of bags that, you know, you might want to get if you want to try out higher premium brands because a lot of the designs are resembling some more premium bags. This one to me resembles the Hermes Picotin bag, not exactly, and it does, it's very much like stuffed with like tissue paper. So I'm gonna get this tissue paper out so you can see. So this is their leather bucket bag. It's made out of a leather called bovine leather, and I got this for 169 pounds. But you can even tell, if you've ever seen the Hermes um, Picotin bag, if you haven't, I'll leave it on the screen like a picture. But it has this, I don't know how to explain it, like a buckle thing that you loop through. You just loop it through, and then it's in this torpy color, which this is the thing, this is the reason I'm not keeping this bag, because one, I just don't find use in, I do like the look of the Picotin bag, but it's definitely not gonna be my first choice of an Hermes bag, just because it's not the vibe that I'm completely going for at the moment. In terms of practicality, it is a very practical bag in the sense that you can actually put your arms through here. It doesn't have a zip, it's an open bucket bag, but if you've seen the Picotin bag, that one is too. I think if you're wanting to try out the Hermes Picotin bag, this is a great alternative because it's really well made. It's not something that you're gonna find online which looks like the Hermes Picotin bag, but isn't well made, it's just to look like it. This is actually really well made. The inside is a cowhide leather, which has this like suede feeling to it. And then you also have this, you'll see close ups, but this large leather pocket. I'm gonna show you guys what fits inside so that you can see what happens to the structure of this bag as you fill it up. So I've got my Arquette bag with me with my things for today. So I'm gonna transfer over the bits from this bag into this bag. I'm gonna start off with my wallet because I'm usually carrying that. And I'm just gonna, lay it flat because that's the best way it fits in here and then i've got my sunglasses case with some sunnies my deodorant and i've got orange juice in here it's very very nice i will say like very spacious and then my makeup brush this is what's happening it's got some weight to it but it's definitely not that heavy to be honest that's everything i've got in my bag for today i'm not going to pretend like i've got more things but i do have here with me my ipad so i'm just gonna because it will fit in here and i can tell which is really good because this would make a really good like i mean it fits but like plays around with the shape a little bit if you're running errands and you need your ipad 
to like do some emails. This is great because it will fit. I mean, you can not see everything inside because you can fasten it. There is no zip to it. But yeah, if you take out the iPad, this is how it looks. And I actually really like it. The only thing about this bag and the reason I'm not keeping this bag is because of the color. It's a little bit too cool toned for any of the outfits that I typically wear. Maybe at some point when it becomes practical in my closet, I'll get it again or get something similar. But yeah, this is a really good, as I said, alternative to the Picotin bag. If you're looking for something like it, I genuinely was looking for something like the Picotin bag. I probably wouldn't even pick up the Picotin bag in this color. I would go for something a little bit more warm or like an ecru tone. It doesn't sag too much. I would think that this would literally droop, but it doesn't. It still holds its shape. But maybe that's also because my wallet is flat. So let me just lift my wallet and see if anything changes. So not really and just like that we've come to the end of the third episode of the worth the hype series if you enjoyed this don't forget to subscribe and hit the thumbs up button and definitely keep your eyes peeled for the next episode which will be out next month if you want to see any specific brands being reviewed don't forget to leave it in the comment section down below i am making my way through the recommendations and also the brands that i genuinely love anyway but with that being said i hope to see you guys very very soon in my next video